Hello, my beautiful Spoonies. In this video, I'll be showing you my current wake up routine. And I'm saying wake up routine because it isn't quite a morning routine yet because insomnia. And we'll talk about that more in a bit. So I don't know about you, but when I have a health problem that really affects the way that I can or can't move, then my mental health really starts to take a hit too. And this year, as I started losing more and more mobility, and when I didn't know why I was losing feeling in my hands and I was losing my ability to write well and, you know, just use hands as hands and not as random clubs and bricks on the end of your arm, um, yeah, I'm not sure where I was going with that anymore because my brain no work right now. You would think that it might after I spent over an hour scripting the rest of this video, but such is the life of being a Spoonie, right? <laughs> so this year, as I got more and more depressed by not being able to move and not understanding what was going on with my arms and hands, I kind of stopped taking care of myself and it became really hard for me to regularly do normal basic tasks like brush my teeth and hair and take showers on a regular basis. <laughs> so if you don't know about Build a Ladder, I will leave a link down in the description box and you can probably not see any of this because I haven't adjusted my camera settings. So I'll just put um, the picture of what this is supposed to look like on the screen instead. Anyways, to motivate myself into getting better, I decided to get into all of the therapies. I'm now in physical therapy, occupational therapy, and mental health therapy. So what I decided to do to help motivate myself on a daily basis was to make a little graphic and print it out and put it in my bookcase, which is directly in front of my bed, to remind myself, hey, when you get out of bed, these are the things that you need to do every day. And the first thing out of that is take your morning pills because... Um, I have to take a thing called levothyroxine because my thyroid doesn't work and you have to take that an hour before having food. So normally I do this step before I ever get out of bed. And the next thing I aim to do is to brush my teeth and my hair because that's basic self-care that needs to happen every day. And the next thing that I have is skincare and a shower. I currently don't quite have enough spoons to take a shower every single day, but every other day, at least once every three days, definitely, I'm now getting a shower, but yesterday was my shower day, so you will not see that in today's video. And then the next rung is to get breakfast and have some tea or coffee because I enjoy a warm drink in the morning with my breakfast, or I could also have made a cold drink for myself. In any case, it's something other than just plain water. And my next step is to plan the day and to pick one daily task that I definitely have to get done. Well, I shouldn't say have to, but I definitely want to try to get done because some days doing all this stuff and having one extra thing is just the most I can do. So I prioritize the one thing that I really want to get done. And then for the rest of my day, as long as I've done this stuff, I can chill. <laughs> I, I don't care as long as I get the one thing that I prioritized done, which sometimes that is chill, then I'm happy. So when I finally decide to get out of bed, the first thing I try to do is put on a pair of compression socks because my autonomic nervous system needs a little extra help sometimes. Then I put on a pair of 
pants and right now my floors are super cold so I add on another layer of thick fuzzy socks. Next I head to the bathroom. As I said earlier I have had my shower yesterday so I'm skipping straight to brushing my hair and getting the tangles out. Next, I put on a headband and pull my hair back so I can easily do my skincare routine. I start with a washcloth and some face soap. I'm very lightly using the washcloth to wash and rinse my face. Once or twice a week I try to use a chemical exfoliator, so I'm really not trying to scrub my face with this washcloth. I'm just using it to lightly distribute the soap, then rinse it off. Next I put on some lip balm, then I brush my teeth. When I finish using my toothbrush, I like to wipe it down with the washcloth just to make sure I'm not leaving any extra toothpaste on the brush to dry out and get crusty. Next, I start putting on all my face stuff. I usually start with the under eye brightener deep puffer thing. I don't know about you, but if I don't regularly take care of this area, I usually get asked if I'm sick because I have naturally puffy dark circles under my eyes. <laughs> then I go in with some toner, which unless I'm really stressed out, helps a lot with my acne. Then I go in with a lightweight moisturizer. And finally, I go in with some sunblock. Remember that chemical exfoliant I was talking about earlier? Well, it causes the skin to be even more easily damaged by UV rays, but hey, at least I won't look like a snake. I get dry scaly skin without this stuff, and I promise it's not from a lack of daily water intake. The next steps for me are an optional if I feel like it sort of thing. Today I felt like putting on some mascara. Brushing out my hair again and parting it. And throwing on some liquid lipstick. When I'm done, I like to wipe down the sink and faucet with my washcloth before getting on with the rest of my morning. I also decided to put on some earrings today. I inherited these from a family member that passed around this time last year, and I've just felt like wearing these as a weird form of memorial since I haven't been able to visit the cemetery this year. Next, I would normally start making my breakfast, but I actually already had my breakfast before I started filming, so I decided to substitute making a cup of herbal tea. Sometimes I can't be bothered to make a fantastic cup of tea with large loose leaves steeped in the proper temperature of water for the right amount of time. On those days when I can't be bothered, I go for letting my Keurig heat up some water and making a cup of herbal tea from a packet. Today, cranberry pomegranate herbal tea sounds good. As I have my breakfast, or in this case my tea, I usually put on a video on my phone and write out a daily goal list on my iPad. I've already done that this morning, so I'm moving on to my occupational therapy exercises. I start by holding a tennis ball rather lightly in three different positions for 30 seconds in each hand. This is a stabilization exercise. I know I'm doing it wrong if I feel pain or am white knuckling the ball. The goal here is to be gentle and steady while having the rest of my arm supported. The next exercise is quite similar. I still hold the ball, but this time I'm holding it with bunny ears and I'm squeezing the ball and holding that squeeze for two to three seconds, again without any pain. And I'm doing that for 10 times in each of those three positions. When I finished with that, I pick up my one pound medicine ball and work on gently flexing my wrists in those same three positions. I also add in an ulnar deviation on this one, so instead of my arm being straight out beside me, it's on an angle. Next, I grab my TheraPutty. 
and a piece of a dowel rod. You could also use a large highlighter or just something kind of chonky because the goal here is to just keep pressing down with my arm tucked in at my side and doing that for about 20 times. Most of the time I try to do this at the counter while standing, but I'm saving my energy or spoons, if you will, for something else later today. The next exercise I always do standing, which is just to apply pressure in a lifting up motion to the underside of a counter for about 10 seconds and do that 10 times on each side. Again, this should not be painful, but it shouldn't be easy either. I have a few other occupational therapy exercises that I can do depending on my day, but I'm not going to be showing those in this video. When I'm done with my breakfast and occupational exercises, I head into the living room and put whatever was on my phone up on the TV before dragging out my physical therapy bag. Again, I'm not showing all of my exercises in this video, but I will be showing several. So, my knees have always been my weakest joint. I was diagnosed with loose ligaments when I was 13 or 14, and it took until 26 to be diagnosed with EDS. Anyways, the reason I'm slipping on a lightweight resistance band above my knees is because it helps me stabilize the movement of standing up and sitting down. I can do it without the resistance band, but the extra pressure from the band helps my neurons communicate a bit better to activate that muscle group so that I'm much less wobbly while doing this movement. And if I'm having a good day, I'll do three sets of 10 repetitions of this. Next, I shift the resistance band down to the lowest part of my ankle, squat a little, and do 10 lateral steps, keeping the resistance band taut the entire time. First leading with one foot one way and then leading back with the opposite foot on the way back. Again, on a good day, I'll do three sets of this as well. Another exercise I do is a modified wall sit. My knees can't handle being at the 90 degree position without screaming with pain and possibly subluxing. So I just slide down the wall until I feel a lot of tension, but not pain. Once I'm in that position, I try to flatten my back against the wall so that the lower part of my back is touching it. I think this is supposed to recruit abs into the exercise. Yay for compound moves! Anyways, I'm currently going for three of these for 10 seconds each. The next exercise I'm doing is a leg kickback. Today, my wrists are feeling pretty stable, so I'm able to plant my fists into the ground. But on the days where my wrists aren't stable, I just rest on my forearms instead. I kind of have to talk myself through the exercise with every movement to make sure I'm doing this the right way and recruiting the right muscle groups. So what I'm doing is shifting my weight over to the leg I'm not lifting up, keeping my hips and back locked into that steady position. So I'm imagining that if I had a glass of water on my back, it wouldn't spill. Then I lift my leg out and up and stop at the point my physical therapist who specializes in hypermobile patients told me to stop. Normally, I would way hyperextend this position before I learned how to do this a safe way. And I'm doing this exercise 10 times for each leg for three sets on a good day. I can also sub this exercise out for donkey kicks if I want, but I did those yesterday and I have other stuff besides therapy that I want to get through today and I'm opting to save those spoons again. The next exercise I'm doing is a back bridge. Again, I have to talk myself through this one. First, I get in the position to do the exercise. Then I flatten my back into the ground and hold that position as I lift my hips up into that bridge position. And again, we're aiming for three sets of 10 with this one. Next, I'm doing some side leg lifts. I think this is supposed to help with hip strength. Honestly, I'm just following the doctor's orders and I should probably learn the exact reason behind why I'm doing these movements at some point. I know they explained why I was doing them when I was first given the exercise, but my memory just isn't very good at the moment. But hold up, let me pause the video real fast because 
I want to take a moment to show the position you're not supposed to be in to do this exercise. This is another one of those moves I found out I've been doing wrong my whole life until my physical therapist corrected me. I need to do a whole separate video about proprioception, but in short, right now my neurons are telling my brain that my hip is at a complete 90 degree angle with the floor, which it definitely is not. I don't know what muscle groups are recruited to do leg lifts from this position, but it's not the hip group that it should be. For years, I could not figure out why my peers were all like, ah, the hip burn, after about five repetitions when I could do 20 before feeling any sort of burn. As it turns out, actually being in the proper positions puts me back in the same playing field as my peers. So I just have to shift my hips further forward to where I feel like I'm about to fall on my face if I go much further so that my hips are actually at a 90 degree angle. Then I can start doing the exercise the right way. Next, I'm doing some side bridges. This movement is probably the most difficult exercise for me at the moment. I'll have to refilm this once I have a bit better form, especially since I didn't realize the angle I was recording from for this was bad. Anyways, what I'm trying to show is that I'm starting on the ground, propped up on one arm, leaving my knees on the ground, then lifting my hips up and forward for a brief side plank before collapsing back to the ground, and doing that all over again for 10 times four or three sets. Almost every PT exercise I have involves three and 10 somehow. At some point during or after PT, I do some hamstring stretches. What I find hilarious is that my knees are very hypermobile, but my hamstrings are trying to compensate for things not working right most of the time, so they tend to stay super tight without stretching every day. I do my hamstring stretches from the floor at the moment to make sure I can't hyperextend my knees and hurt something. I'm using a yoga strap that I've had for years, but if you don't have one of those, you could just put your foot up against a wall and lean forward. I'm actually trying to lean forward as I'm doing these, but I have a feeling it will be several weeks before you can tell I'm leaning forward on camera. And please be careful while doing any stretches. Make sure to take care of your body and don't try to stretch too hard too fast. You really don't want to hurt anything. And stretching the wrong way can definitely lead to problems. Next, I'm pulling over my calf stretching board. Again, you could do this without the tool by just standing up against a wall and lifting your toes up to the wall. But I got this board after I really tore up my right leg while I was in undergrad. That injury was the first time I ever had to go through physical therapy to recover. Anyways, I start in a neutral position and make sure I feel like my knees are bent a little so I don't hyperextend while doing this. Next, I turn my toes in and hold that position. Then I turn my toes out and hold that position. And as the last part of my morning or wake up routine, I'm doing some compound movements with a half BOSU ball. The goal here is to step up and be stable before stepping back down. I'll do 10 of these leading with my right foot, then another 10 leading with my left foot. Eventually, I'd like to do an updated morning routine that's actually a morning routine. Right now, I'm working on automating my wake up process because your girl has insomnia and really does not waking up at a certain hour, especially if it's in AM. I don't know how to do AM wake-ups right now, but if and when I figure it out, because I think I'm on the track to doing that, I will let you know and create an updated process. If you've made it this far in the video, let me know what your favorite part of your morning and or wake-up routine is, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!